Welcome to the Poker Road Radio Show, hosted by Gavin Smith, Joe Seabock, and Bart Hansen. Poker Road Radio is the only poker radio show that lets Eugene Todd bro smoke whatever he wants. <laughs> Hello, everyone from Foxwoods. <laughs> we are at the Foxwoods World Poker Finals in Massantucket, Connecticut. In Massantucket. The- I thought it was Mass and Tucket. Mass and Tucket. Are you sure that Ash? The, the, it's, a the ma- sh- it's the Mash and Tucket Peacock. You know what it's tribe. like? It's like you have like like you have potatoes. You mash them and then yeah. you tuck them. It's the Mash and Tucket. Okay, Mash and Tucket Pequot Tribe. Mash and Tucket. And by the way, the Mash and Tucket Pequot Tribe. Not Tuck what? Mash and Tucket. Anyways, they allowed Seabock into the reservation. I, rumor was he was stopped. Although rumor truth be told, <laughs> they, they did they did stop me. They did. This is true. <laughs> they came out the full horses, the whole nine, but. I do have Indian blood, so they allowed me to come into the country. Despite the fact I had three Mexicans and, like, a full satchel of cocaine <laughs> on my uh, horse. But it was all I've good. been out drinking with you, and I agree that you do have a little Indian in you. It is, <laughs> is that from the Greenstein side? <laughs> it Indian? is, it is yeah. from the, the Greenstein tribe. <laughs> <laughs> well, th- I mean, we're going to start off the show right away. Right? I mean, yeah, here we go. <laughs> from Canada, I have to tell you, Seabock, I mean, I've kept my mouth shut about this whole thing. <laughs> But you acted like the biggest jackass at the border. I wasn't surprised that they didn't let you in. You mean to the chick? Yeah. She was such a bitch, though, man. No, but I mean, it was the most unsmooth dude, thing I had this, ever this seen in dude, my dude, life. Dude, I want you to know, though. Yeah. I want I mean, you to Amanda, know, am I wrong? In your defense, though, yeah. I, I have probably <laughs> crossed the border by vehicle over 200 times. Right. On the one day... I got stopped going into the States to play golf. Right. I got stopped going into Canada on the way back. See. Then on the way down here, as we were going to New York on Sunday night, we got pulled over again, and we sat in our room while nobody was going in, and they made right. us wait an hour before they actually talked to us. It was sick. All that I said to this joke. woman, th- this is what happened. She asked me if I'd been arrested, and I said no. Okay. She then went and dug up this whole... <laughs> damn it. They found me again. And then she dug up this whole thing about how I had been arrested when I was like 18 years and two months for my senior prank, right? Which I honestly didn't even remember. It's a bad senior prank if you're getting arrested. You can probably choose pranks that don't... This, this, is how it, this is how it goes down. Number one, right off the bat, what the problem was was that... So we get... You know, we're in the car. It's Amanda, Joe, and I. And the guy says... This is when we drive up. We haven't even been pulled over. The guy's like, what are you doing in Canada? Joe's like, well, we're going to the casinos. And I start scratching my head. I'm like, why doesn't he just say, you know, we're going to cover the tournament? So the guy says, all right, you got to go inside and check in. So we go and check in, and this lady, who you could tell was a bitch right away, right. like an older lady, she's like, what are you guys doing in Canada? And Joe says, we're going to the casinos. And then she said, well, are you working in Canada? And then Joe said, no. And I was looking right. over, and I was like, what do you mean no? Well, it's like and a mind game, uh, this, these people. Because what I thought she meant was, you know how when you go and you uh, work in other countries, you need like a visa, you need all this kind of shit? Why didn't you just shit? say, <laughs> we're going to play a poker tournament? Because I'm fucking stupid. The reason I said it was because I had Bart, I had Amanda, who were not playing in the tournament. So I figured I would give the answer. They're my reflected. friends. They're coming with me. I know. I'm I going to play the tournament. Up. So who's this guy? He's my buddy. Who's this one? My I girlfriend. Up. I have nothing to say. I fucked up. There's nothing else you to say. You blew it! And so then she and then she goes, you know, after that, she like well so you and you said she said well what are you doing in canada you're like well i'm covering a poker tournament right. and she's like well then you are working in canada and then all the floodgates started oh, and then it he a- she asked him if he'd been arrested and he said no and right. then like we go and sit down and then five minutes later she's like well what's this thing? i know that was the, you this were 18 was the you're an adult when you were arrested you didn't get raped you didn't get raped in prison or anything did you dude i don't want to talk about that that's not <laughs> what this show is about okay stay on point my friend so I say no. I say she pulls up this <laughs> obscure restaurant. You said no in prison too, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> and she, <laughs> she pulls up this arrest charge. So I was already like, okay, you're right. I was arrested for this. Then I went and sat back down. Then she called me back up. She said, okay, have you been arrested for anything else? And I said, I don't believe so. I don't believe so. What a okay, but hold answer. on. <laughs> but what am I supposed to say after I've already <laughs> said no? And she like did like a Dumbledore wizard move Joe, on me. Joe, if I was arrested when I nowhere. was 18, I would also know if I'd been arrested after that too. It wouldn't be like a I had, answer. I had absolutely no idea that all of the cocaine running and the Mexican illegal immigrant running was on my record. Okay. At any rate, it was a mess. It was a shit storm. <laughs> you guys did a great job on the show while I was gone. I was very proud of you. You held down the fort. It's all good. Truth and be told, it was just a big PR move. So I'm going <laughs> to yeah, let the cat right. out of the bag. None of this actually I might happened. believe that unless I, was act- or if I wasn't actually there. <laughs> but, uh, you know, so... 
you know, and you were all bent out of shape, obviously. We had to drive you back across the border, and then right. we went to a couple of hotels like Seneca, and they were all sold out, and then he had to stay at this sketchy-ass hotel. Yeah. And then Amanda and I had to recross. And then when Amanda came back the next day, she actually went through the same guy th- driving through, and he right. said, oh, I didn't know that you guys didn't work for the WPT. If I knew that you hadn't worked for the WPT, I would have just waved you right through anyway. Right, it been so they good. thought that we worked for the WPT and there had been some issue back in the day. But apparently somebody took your identity, right? Is that what it was? I don't know exactly what happened. I mean, somebody either took my identity or had my name or whatever, bribed somebody to, to do this. I don't know. Gavin probably is behind this shit, truth be told. Um, but it all went down, and now I have to deal with the FBI for like three or four months. Well, that's the other thing I wanted to bring up because, you well, know. Is this going to screw you up, though, for going like to Australia? Australia. Yeah. We're, we're, yes. What's the deal with Aussie Millions? The Are you going to be able okay, to make so, it? So what you have to do is you have to get fingerprinted, which I've already done, send that into the FBI, then they get in touch with you, which I've received that call today. But, you know, it's basically, it's a government thing, so I'm sure that this is something they could deal with in a week if they wanted to. But because of the bureaucracy and all the bullshit, it's probably going to take like three or four months. So we'll see what happens. I'm still going to try to go to Australia well, no matter sucks, what. sucks, bro. Yeah, man. I know. It's terrible. It definitely sucks, bro. Speaking of it bros. It sucks ca- bro. Speaking of bros, we're going to have Eugene Todd bro on here as a guest who, on the show. Who has and had he has his a own. very interesting story. <laughs> uh, apparently, Eugene Todd bro was temporarily kicked out of the Manishucket. <laughs> Mash and Tucket. Mash and Tucket. Mash and Tucket. But hold, tribal but, but I don't reservation. Think, I don't think we should tell the story, though. Let's say, no, let's we're not going to tell the story, story but, but he was kicked out temporarily. Okay. From the Indian tribe. Right, I'm going to kill. If the bad boys plays again, then somebody's getting their ass beat. So just know that now. <laughs> uh, you know, we got a lot of emails since the last show. I mean, there had been a break. I mean, obviously, you know, you had planned on being in Niagara, but a lot of people don't know what had been up in your lives in between the World Series and uh, right. all the way through Niagara. I mean, we didn't get any chance to talk about how you bubbled once again. Oh, yeah. Once uh, again. Seventh at Legends. Gavin finished eighth place at a barge $200 tournament in, uh, in nice. uh, low ball. Low ball draw. I did. Won two hundred dollars. Did you? Why didn't you tell me this? <laughs> I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> I was probably drinking. That that right there is how meaningful that tournament was to Gavin. He did not even remember. Um, two hundred bucks. Yeah, I mean, I think it's been it's been pretty well covered. Now I wrote an article about it that appeared in Bluff. You know, bubbled the TV final table again. That's so how you got the name Joe Seventh Bar. Joe, Se- which is awesome, by the way. Thank you very uh, much. I na- I I coined him Joe Seventh Bar. Yeah, <laughs> I wrote that in the article. You I wrote did? that in the article. Yeah. In the last, in the I'm last. I'm proud line. of that. No, you should be. I it, honestly, it means friendship and love. When you can take me, kick me in the face while I'm <laughs> on the ground, it's it's love, is what it the is. The real question is, did you really, did you learn anything? I mean, when you're in that position, are you going to be able to I not finish seventh next? I, time? I learned that <laughs> um, somehow the the event at the bike became like on the internet, <laughs> which was if anyone had an ace, they were going to hit that ace in during that hand. Because um, the way that it all went down, you know, was that I got in, t- you know, two times with a pair to an ace. And, you know, both with uh, to David the Dragon fam and Tom Schneider, they both were able to spike that ace on me. So, I don't know, remove the aces from the deck. That may be the uh, education that I received at that event. Then uh, you'd really like kings. Then you would love – how much would you love kings? Because they'd be the new aces. Kings would be the new aces. I always had a question about Harrington, right? Like, he's supposed to be, like, this big-time nit, or that's right. what everybody on TV. But does he actually play like that? No, though? he's not near – I mean, I mean, he's certainly not the nit he's portrayed as. He plays tighter probably than most, but Dan gets in there and he plays. I mean, the guy knows how to play. He doesn't have the results that he has, you know, he's just no, by He's no around. Alan Kessler. He's, he's not, he's he's not no the chainsaw. chainsaw. He's no, no chainsaw. <laughs> 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 We've got a great email from a guy that I'm going to get to later on the show regarding uh, maybe a possibly a new segment that we're going to do on the show. Chainsaw's Corner? Alan Kessler? The Chainsaw's Al- Corner? <laughs> the Chainsaw's I love crib. it. <laughs> the Alan Kessler bust out segment where oh we go through how he loses every single you know tournament. You know what's so awesome? <laughs> I, ran into him, I ran into him today. He was on the table next to me. And he's like, Joe, he's like, you wouldn't believe it. And I was like, uh, let me guess. You've already had aces and kings. You've lost 25,000 and you're down to 5,000. He goes, no, I'm down to 11,000. But the rest of the story you have dead on. That's exactly what happened. I've already had aces and kings. <laughs> 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 and it was the funniest thing I've heard in my life. <laughs> I mean, you got to think positively in poker. He's the only guy where he can be way ahead, and he right. just knows he's going to lose, right? I he's got a dominating hand, and I he's going to lose. I honestly think, I was talking to Bear about this the other day, most of us play poker to win money or to win tournaments, to do these things. I honestly think Alan Kessler plays poker so he can accumulate stories to tell people of bad things that have happened to him. Oh, I think he likes to. I don't think he cares about the money, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think he cares about that. I mean, it's amazing to me that uh, that story that came out about. I mean, and I believe it too. You go, he goes back for the refund for the second day <laughs> at the so World awesome. Series for the second tournament <laughs> to get the dinner voucher. <laughs> <laughs> That's so awesome. 
Now, Gavin, you didn't. I don't know. Did you announce it towards the end of the show that you're actually getting married too? That's another thing that came about. I am getting between. married. Between. So congratulations. Thank that you. is really something. Who the hell? would agree to marry you anyways. This is like sound effects mania. <laughs> wow, it's like, uh, I can't even think. <laughs> I think there's a lot of people that would agree to marry me. I'm well, just like, maybe I just never met him. Yeah, Firth, I, Firth's raising his hand. I think, I, think, I think that I'm catch. Well, I mean, I don't know if I would say you're a cat. I mean, there's probably people who would agree, but... You know. I'm a nice guy. No, is this I'm not disputing that. I have I've, I've probably above average earning potential. Probably, I would agree with that. Uh, I would agree and, with I, that. And, and I'm nice to people. Most of the time. Until, until, I get angry. until you hit the dark hour, which is like 2 a.m. Yeah. 2 a.m. Yeah. is when the oh. alcohol turns on you. Yeah, that's true. And all of a sudden, it becomes uh. like, you know that part in Ghost? At the end, all the, all the little beasts are like, Mah. That's what happens to I you was at 2 told, dude. you know, I used to, when I, you know, I was really excited about Joe offering me this position. You know, and I only known about it for a month. You know, it was really like a random thing. And I, you know, I was telling everybody in the casinos, oh, I'm going to do this thing with, you know, Gavin Smith and Joe Seabock, and they're going to be, it's great. They're two great guys. Gavin's a great guy, but you cannot be the last person at the bar with him. <laughs> I did not say this. Whatever you he's coming up with, cannot be the last person at the bar with him. So they said. <laughs> I don't believe Joe ever said that. <laughs> was I the one who said no, this? No, 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 no. It wasn't you. Joe. No, no. Thank you. Can you true. apologize? I didn't say this. Why would I have to apologize? Because I didn't say this. But all I ever said is I don't think Joe would say that. So why oh, I thought you said you didn't believe me. I well, I apologize to you. Yeah, well, I mean, I, I got apolo- to I gotta apologize for having your back. Sorry, exactly. sorry, <laughs> sorry I was supporting you, you <laughs> son of a bitch. <laughs> I take it back. What I'm sorry. I, I am the one who should have been apologizing. I apologize. So what's the deal with this chick? American broad? Okay. <laughs> that first is off, so not first the off, way you ask about first off, Beyonce. we're not going to discuss my future wife as either a chick <laughs> or a broad. All right. I know that might be the way it happens on fucking Beacon Hill in Boston, <laughs> but okay, it ain't happening that way here. All right. All right. So what's uh, the deal with this, this young lady this that young I lady. that I'm engaged to? Yeah, she's American. She's from Idaho. Uh, I met her. <laughs> I met her uh, quite a while ago, probably uh, <laughs> close to three years ago. Uh, we See, Buck fr- almost got destroyed by Eric Seidel opening I the know. door. <laughs> Jeez. Eric was uh, <laughs> clearly in a bad mood. Continue. We, we, were, we were friends for a while, but uh, it, it didn't work out uh, through either of our situations. And then recently, uh, at the beginning of this year, it did work out, and uh, it's been kind of a whirlwind since, and uh, it's great. And when are you, uh, when's the date? August 9th next year. Yep. August 9th of, uh, of 08. Mm-hmm. And is it... Wedding going to be in Canada? Yep, it's going to be oh. in Guelph, Ontario, Canada. Nice. Who do you, did you ever think you'd see the day? For Gavin to get married? Sure, a, Gavin is a, gay, a great guy. There's no <laughs> question. <Whoa. laughs> I, I apparently need speech lessons, but that doesn't change the fact Gavin's a good guy. The, the real upside for me is that I get to play Transformers with Gavin's uh, fiance's little boy, yes. which is awesome. Oh, how old is the little boy? Six. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's very exciting. They're, and they're equally, they, they're, they're sort of like having competitions right now. Caden, Caden's like, no, I know I have more Transformers than Seabock. No way. Like, I, I don't know. <laughs> Joe's no got way. a lot of Seabock. Ta- like, uh, you Transformers. have Transformers like from old school. Why don't you move, dude? You're, I know. Seabock, he, he, he's sitting right behind the door every you know time I don't this move? guy opens the door. You know why I don't door. move? You know why I don't move, Bar Hansen? Why? Because I live on the edge, buddy, and I oh, like okay. it. That's right. I have a ton of Transformers. I've got some old ones, and I've recently acquired some new ones. I'm a big fan. I always have been. Like old ones back from the mid-80s? Yeah. Like the little... Yeah, I remember totally. watching that. And GoBots, too. Go, no, dude, that's insulting on levels I can't what? even possibly touch. I mean, they were similar. GoBots are like the bastard stepchildren of Transformers. <laughs> okay, so you don't be bringing GoBots. Go, I mean, listen, GoBots. That's like the <laughs> stupidest ass name for anything I've ever heard. Yeah, why don't you GoBart? <laughs> yeah, I'm going to call you GoBarts from now on. Destroy Autobots. <laughs> <laughs> well, we got to talk a little bit about some poker here. Joe, you are in the tournament. Gavin, you're playing tomorrow. I'm playing tomorrow. All right. Joe, you have uh, already been busted from the tournament, unfortunately, well, you on know, day one. I, I'm one of those. I looked at the thing, and Joe was the chip leader. I don't understand right. how this happened. I'm, I'm, is a smile saying that. I'm one of the, f- the rare few individuals in poker who can be the chip leader and be out of <coughs> the tournament. <laughs> Gavin as well. Gavin and I, we're like a two-headed monster. <laughs> um, you know, basically, yeah, I mean, I ran it up. I was running my table great. I, I, you can kind of tell that they were nervous, and that's the best feeling ever when you can tell that the table doesn't like playing with you. And then I just had a tough hand, and you know what? You think they were scared of you? Well, yeah. I mean, w- once you get to the point where you have a lot of chips, if you're that kind of player who's going to be aggressive, or I'm just going to put them in, you know, in a moment's notice. And especially you take it a step further when you have a player like me who, you know, I could have the nuts, or I could be on a stone cold bluff. That's even harder to play against and put somebody in. I mean, it's very, very difficult. Um, so I did that, and then I ran to a very, very tough hand. It wasn't the sick beat that it was reported online. It was reported, you know, that I had two queens in my hand. You know, I flopped a set of queens, and somebody quadded up on me in the river. 
Um, rather, there were two queens and two nines on the board. I had the queen, so I had, uh, I had the top full house, queens full of nines, but the other dude had, you know, f uh, four nines. Or other dude, this Kyle uh, Bowker, I believe his name is. Um, How'd the action go? Yeah, that, um, that's what I'm interested about, because you said that Barry got mad at you over the phone. Well, no, no, he was just being kind of a jerk because... Well, he's a jerk sometimes, and <laughs> <laughs> he. Uh, we just kind of talk with how I, he's very into like semantics, and he said I didn't. The way I said it, it, it made it sound like I had two queens in my hand, so that's why he was. I, I was under the impression you did too. Yeah, that's how it's. That's no, how no, it was no. reported. I mean, right. there's a big difference between having a hand. Wait, how much did you have to call? No, well, he bet. He made a big bet on the end of twenty. I, the mistake in the hand was that I should have just called and yeah, saved the I extra seven thousand. Right. Ultimately, it wasn't the hugest deal, but um, the way the hand went, I was I wasn't going to be able to fold. Um, but I could have. What he? I checked him on the end. He bet twenty thousand, and I just moved him in for twenty seven, or for his last seven thousand. When I should have just called. Well, yeah. Why, why did you? Why did you put that seven thousand in? It was a bad play. Well, yeah, but there was no. There yeah, was. You thought he'd call you with a nine? That's the point. It was a bad play. He well, yeah, he, pro he probably wouldn't have called me with a nine. A lot of people here at Foxwoods would, mm -hmm. but Kyle probably wouldn't. He's he's a pretty decent player. Well, the key so to a, a double play. paired board hand like that too is that th he's, you said that there was no card higher than a nine right. out there as a kicker card. So he doesn't, le you know, if there's a, if the board's queen ten nine queen queen ten nine nine or queen jack, right. queen nine nine, you lose to queen jack and queen ten as well if you have a naked queen. You do. If the board's uh, queen the queen rumor, nine nine, right? <laughs> queen queen jack nine nine, you lose to queen jack if you have a naked queen. Well, if you have queen jack, of yeah, course. that's oh, what I'm saying. Right. That's what that's the point. But he right. said there was no card that was above a nine. I man. was I was gonna lose the hand. There's no way, especially uh. with the action, the way that it went. The flop came down queen jack nine. I had queen ten, so I had open end and a queen. Um, I checked, or I think I bet, I bet, excuse me, I bet there were four players in the pot. I bet the other two guys folded. Kyle raised me. I called, flat called. Then the nine came on the turn, kind of sealing my fate, giving him quads. Of course, I didn't know that. I checked again. He bet again. I just called. And then the queen came on the end. I checked again. He made the bet, and I should have just called him at that point. Or I could have even bet out. But I wanted to kind of give him that, the maintain that feeling of, I, you know, I probably have something. I don't th I necessarily have a queen. You know, obviously I didn't bet on the it. turn. Well, you I was probably six thousand. I was gonna into say into how big of a pot. So the pot was probably ten thousand at that point. I was gonna say I love the bet. Yeah, I was actually before you even said I love that bet on the turn. So many people right. checked behind. No, I like the bet. I'm not positive. I like the call though on the turn. Well, well, I could. I mean, yeah. I mean, it certainly so is, is uh, the, discussable. The, the whole pro the whole problem I don't like about the call is you're obviously. Uh, when you're making that call, because you're, you're basically on uh, a queen with no kicker at this point. Right. Well, the so kicker doesn't play, right? Right. Yeah. So at this point, you're now hoping to make your straight, right? And the problem is, it's hard to get paid off much when you're when you're making a four liner straight. Right. When the, right? right. So I don't like calling bets on it with one card to come, when it, even if I hit my card, I'm calling this big portion. I'm, I'm, sure. I'm very unlikely to get paid off much by a worse hand. But I'm always going to get cr crippled by a better hand. So I think when the board pairs and you're just going to make a four-liner, um, uh, I like I like just dumping the hand uh, on the turn there. Yeah, and you may have been right. I think I was ripping. in that you know that mode where I've just been running over the table, right. steamrolling, and then I just didn't even, don't even think about a boom because you know that you're going to end up somehow winning this hand. You know, and then of course the, the uh, I thought it was the magic card, but it was actually the death card was that uh, third queen on the river. Well, you know, the interesting thing is sometimes I get confused in these deeper. Well, I mean, not really in the deeper stack tournaments, but when you're at a at a play, you know, or when you're at a level where you're somewhat short stack, which right. you get towards in tournaments, I think sometimes I blow people out because I'm so accustomed to playing deep stack cash games where I think that in a deeper stack cash game when you're 200 or 300 big blinds right. deep, you have to bet on the turn with quads there because unless the guy is so bad that he's going to call a river raise with right. a hand like a straight, right? then you, you've got to build the pot up and you almost try to bet him in to the hand. So that's why I kind of like the bet on the turn. I, I mean, yeah. I think, you know, Kyle, his best move was his big bet on the river. You know, he played it so perfectly. He said, okay, I, I know Seabog has a queen. I mean, oh, he, yeah. he did what I do to other people all the time. And he played me perfectly, and it was one of those reflexive things, you know, where I should have thought, well, hey, man, this guy's not going to put all this money in unless the, the best I'm playing for is a chop right here. Right. You know, he's just not going to do it. Um, so he, I, you know, I give him credit. He played the hand well, and unfortunately, I was just a bit in that kind of. I'm just going to run all these mother effers over. You know, one you know? of the other things about that river too that a lot of times in a deeper stack cash game, I think I see somebody make a mistake is they're like, okay, I make quads. Well, that you've got a naked queen, so all you're doing is chopping against a queen. Right. So instead, what they'll do instead of making their initial one bet, I look at that as a one bet street against you. You have right. a queen, you can make or call one bet. So they check to you, you make a bet with a queen, and they make a huge check raise, and then you're like, well. 
especially if there's a high card out there above right. a nine, you're like, well, do I want to call off the chop here? Whereas right. they can make the price. They can name the price. And it's right. very difficult for you to exactly. just open full. And, and, that's, and, and then it becomes a, a function of who you're playing against. You know, and the fact that matter was is Kyle wasn't, you know, some people will do this, especially in Foxwoods, especially on the East Coast. People do crazy shit. But, you know, Kyle, Kyle is a good player. So, you know, yeah. it, was a bad, it was a bad spot. It's a pretty good bet, though. It is a bet that a person who had a queen might make thinking, okay, I don't think that this guy's going to want to call off 20000 for right. half the spot. Right. So it's true. It, it's true. It, is, it is a good bet for someone who just has a queen. But, I mean, you know, uh, so, I, I mean, I don't necessarily, I hate your check raise on the river. I don't mind your call of the twenty thousand on, right. on the river. I agree. I, I, I just agree. I think I think the fatal error on the hand is 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 on the turn. I think the turn yeah. is where where you should. If you're going to look back at the hand and try to to grow from that hand, I think you should look back at at the turn and <laughs> and and not not go for draws where you know you have to hit something because you. I mean, I think right. in your mind in your in your own mind you knew you were behind. Right, sure. Right? Oh, sure and sure, obviously, sure. you don't want to ever hit a ten to make two pairs. Sure, of course. Well, it's right? so good, right? Right, yeah. and you, you, so you think the queen's all right, and then you think the straight's all right, and and either one of those cards, right? Like no matter if the queen comes off, if the king comes off, or if the eight comes off, any of those cards comes off. It's so hard to to be good and make and actually right, and, exactly. and make money. Exactly, so uh, exactly. I think that's just where, where you, I think that's the 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 real learning point from the hand is that uh, the, on the turn, you know, it's like okay, well, you know. It looked good. It looked like right. a pretty. It looked like a pretty good yeah. flop, yeah. you know. But I guess it wasn't. Now the bear is also knocked out today, right? The bear was knocked it's pretty out. Pretty rare for him, right? On yeah. day one. Well, it's pretty rare for both of us, honestly, yeah. these days. Um, but yeah, you know, he's knocked out. He also takes these things very personally. You know, when I get knocked out really early, I I do ten. Sometimes I try not to tell him because it kind of affects the way he plays. I don't know if that happened here or not. Does he take it almost like a personal insult, like you're his son? You know, you did something where he thinks you played right. bad, so he's like, "Why well, didn't I teach him better?" I don't know you if know? It, it might be. I don't know if it is any so much anymore. I think it's just you know, we play as a team. You know, we kind of have like yeah. a team, you know, uh, that goes in and we play all these events. It's me, me, and all of us, and we all kind of pull our, pull our bankrolls together. So you know, when when the when the team takes a hit, we all take a hit. You know, and obviously we are literally family as well. So right. that that takes it a step further. Um, but I don't know. You know, I just you know, he didn't tell me any specific gnarly hand. You know, just one of those days maybe where he couldn't get it going, unfortunately. Now, one of the more incredible things that happened today, and people were running around talking about a story that involved J.C. Tran and an opponent. <laughs> right. Where Did you J hear about this? J.C. No. Tran, oh, wow. this is the most uh, <laughs> unbelievable thing. And it just, it, it from what I've seen in the cash game room about, like, some of the floor men and decisions, it just, I, I'm not surprised. I've right. been here for four days. But J.C. Tran got it all in against a guy. And the action is irrelevant, but the board was 995, and he had Jack 9, Okay. And when he turned over Jack-9, the guy literally went to muck his hand, turned his cards over, and threw his hand in. No, no, he did not turn his... No, I mean, he mucked him. Mucked, mucked a hand. Yeah. Not over. I mean, I mean right. the hand, cards are down. Yeah, he okay. mucked And mucked hand. the hand. The dealer took it upon him or horse, herself to take that player's cards, flip them back up, and the river... And the board was 995, and the river came 8-6, and the guy had a 7 in his hand and won the pot. Yeah. With a running straight. And, um, the you whole, know, the whole issue, and of course, obviously, you know, for, for anybody listening, dealers everywhere are not allowed to flip over any player's hands. This I mean, is an interesting situation, though. If, if all the money's all in, right. um, it, it, it is a tournament rule that both hands have to be turned up. Right, but if right? you muck the hand, no, it hits the muck. No, no, you would st that turn should still be, that hand should still be turned up. And the whole reason I don't for know that, if that's true. The whole, uh, absolutely, the whole reason for that rule is to prevent chip dumping. Well, that's, that's you, the whole you, reason why you had to flip over right. the cards in the first place, right? right? But, like, yeah. but, but if, if, if I'm doing this to Joe and I want to dump my chips, right. Right. and I throw my hand face down, there's got to be some recourse to that. They have right. to turn that hand well, up so that you're not going to have this And issue. I don't know if you were aware of this. We, talked mm -hmm. about, we, we weren't able to talk about it that much with... Uh, Jason March, the uh, tournament director right. at, in Niagara, but something similar happened where there was a woman that finished 19th who was a local there who got an all-in against the guy who had aces, and she had ace-king, and the guy who had aces tried to flip his hand up, but it got accidentally, while he was flipping it up, some of the cards went in the muck. But the point is, like Gavin says, and now I remember this, is that the hand is retrievable in that situation, right? Mm -hmm. Just for, the, for that reason, 
the, you know, the purpose of protecting the integrity but of the game... But what if you chuck it all the way into the muck? It's in the muck. Well, you, can't, you don't it, know if which you, cards if are you, which. If you, if you if can't, can't retrieve it, it then yeah, obviously yeah. It's, a dead, it's, yeah. it's a dead hand. Yeah. But if that was done, it would be done for a reason, and the person who threw the hand into the muck right. would be subject to some sort of penalty. Right. But yeah. in this case, I mean, it, it, it's, it's very clear that the rules are when the money is all in, both hands get turned up. Right. And you can't give a situation to chip number that has to be turned up. So, I mean, I, I, I think agree with you. I think the dealer did the right thing, and if the floor ruled that that hand's alive, I think he did the right thing, too. Yeah, I, I don't know what the deal is. I mean, I understand. I understand. I think you're right. Your point certainly in theory is right. It makes right. sense for sure. Certainly yeah. in theory is right that you have to turn that for that exact reason. But, uh, you know, I don't know. Obviously, JC was very pissed off. He didn't understand or, or he thought that the hand was there, which I would have thought as well. You know, I certainly would have been irritated, but you know, you might be 100% right. I don't, I don't know what the ruling should have been. I just find it interesting that people think, and especially when you start playing cash games where there's all different rules, people think that the mock is like this, you know, boundary line of deadness where if right. the cards go and they touch the mock, the cards are automatically dead under any circumstances. It's just not the case. There are certain circumstances where it hands a are lot of the time. You know, well, well, in that particular hand, you might, you might, I, I can see how JC would be a little upset, and and I think though, when, when talked about, when you talk to him about it logically after the fact he won't be but uh I, I would see that but i mean i don't think it's right to impact 600 other people that are in this tournament you know to to save jc from getting upset about about the way that went that went down you mean just by changing the call yeah i mean uh, by, by making the call the wrong call i mean jc's not supposed to win that ball and that impacts 700 Right. Or how many other people are going to play this yeah, tournament? I don't know. I don't know. One of the things that uh, I want to start doing is kind of have a link, kind of an update from our last event to our next event. So Speaking of which. Niagara. Niagara. What about the pool? Who won? Well. I, I know I had the winner. <laughs> I had second. So you know who won. <laughs> we, had, we both had Clemens as the winner, right? We, d we both had we Clemens, both had Clemens, as, Clemens as the winner. We both had Little as second. Yeah, and then. You might have had the Barrett fourth. I think I had the Barrett third. I had the bear at fourth. You had the bear at third. The bear was fourth, Clue right? So. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I don't know. We're gonna have to look it up and look over the points again. My, but gu my guess is you're gonna win. Did I you guys bet? Did you guys make a wager? I, I think we did. I think we bet a hundred bucks. We bet a hundred bucks. Yeah. Nice. nice. I mean, you know, I'm not surprised that I won, but. Ooh, snap! The monkey. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Barry got his money in pretty good. I was <laughs> I was sitting there with Alex. Yep. Um, and uh, it, the other interesting thing about the WPT final table now is is that everyone was always complaining that. Well, you know, they increase these structures so that they can get the thing over within four hours. Well, right. this thing lasted forever. Well, they just changed all the structures <laughs> back. Right. Right, right, right. right, right. It used to be like that. Right. Let's get this shit over with, bam, bam, bam. Now they're just, n well, they're not changing. Well, what they do is they stay make it the stay structure. with the they same thing. They just run it. And yeah, they, they leave it at an hour and a half levels? Yeah, yeah, they left an hour. Right. Yeah. That's fantastic. Yeah, that's spectacular. But my question is, is how long Cheers will they that. be able to do that for if that doubles, say, the production cost of the show? Well, I mean, that was the concern, too. Oh, no, I agree with you. I'm just saying in the general. But, I mean, after Barry got knocked out, I was sitting there watching three or four hours. He got it in with Ace-9 versus King-9 against this local guy, David right, Cloutier. Right. There, there, Cloutier didn't get got knocked out in third. I think something like six or seven. I mean, Court was there covering six or seven hours later, and there wasn't all that much action in between. It just must have been like kind of watching paint dry towards the end. I mean, the power of editing on a WPT show, I just right. wonder uh, if they're going to, say, tolerate or stand sure. around for 14-hour final tables. Well, it's, it, you know? it's a difficult situation because obviously they're concerned with making a television show. Right, exactly. And, but yeah. we're concerned with having a fair situation where we can play for millions and millions of dollars. So there has to be some give and take how there. Mu you know? How much really? You, you, it, there's no way that a 14-hour a final table as opposed to a 7-hour final table can double production costs. You're, well, you got to... I mean, I, mean, I don't it's know it's what the rules are in Canada, but be, in the U.S., the way no, that TV it's, it's, and unionized stuff works, all it's that gonna stuff, be double time and a half, double time. No, it's going to be reasonably substantial, but I mean, I mean, obviously, the majority... Uh, to me, the majority of the costs have to be in the transportation of all the equipment, moving everything, and those don't get changed right. on, the, on the length it of the time. It may not double. I mean, it's certainly going to increase it. You know, there's no question about yeah. that. Um, but it's tough. I mean, we've been having these arguments for years now, two or three or four or five well, they're years. They're saving a bunch of money by not throwing the PPT anymore. They can just use the money they were going to use for that. How, <laughs> how bad was it before? 45-minute levels? They cut it from a 90 it, to 40 when it got heads up, When it got heads up, it went to half-hour levels. Yeah, it was sick. It was well, just that's, like that's, not, as, that's so not as bad as when it's six-handed and they cut it right. in half, right? Uh, I believe they stayed at hour levels until when. Yeah. They, when, they went to the, when they went to the final table, they made everybody have an average stack. So they scaled the blinds back to where everybody had 50 big blinds, or where the average stack was 50 big blinds. Then they did hour levels, and, and they raised it up, and then they went to half hour levels when it got heads up. See, I wouldn't know about any of this because I don't ever actually make it to these final tables, so it's <laughs> yeah. good. I'm very glad at I have Gavin here. At, <laughs> at, at seventh position, they don't change the structure in any way. No, you know, I, was, I thought they would. I, we got to the final table both times. I said, guys, 
Uh, or isn't the structure going to change in some way? I would just they said no. I'd no, no, no. What they didn't actually <laughs> say no. Joe got to the final table at the bike and he goes, "Isn't the structure going to change?" And they said, "Yes, as soon as you're out. <laughs> <laughs> as soon as you go, wherever <laughs> that will be." It's just a given. And the funny <laughs> thing is, is that if people aren't familiar with the way these tournaments work, I mean, you've got the WPT that set their trust, they call it, and their big stadium up, big stage, and all the seating, usually in a different part of the casino. And then when you're just playing down to seven, you're just in the normal tournament right. area with like it's some so people sick. watching you. Around. You, you know, you know what's even better? I was talking to some of the uh, the WPT personnel today, and they asked me <laughs> if I would come and shoot a very special, you know, video segment that would be me in the desert. With a television set of some size. Watching the final table <laughs> that you could have got to. Either, <laughs> and I think they wanted me to smash the television set. And then they were going to turn that segment into like Bubble Boy. They were going to make me the official Bubble Boy. You should do it. Jackass. I like love it. Mascot. I'll do it. Why would you do it? You don't. You make the final tables or you don't. You don't you're not like me. That's true. I don't think I've ever come seventh. Exactly. <laughs> have you come seventh twice though? No. Because I have. Sorry about that. It's good stuff. And also the pay stays the same, like between seven and ten, right? Something like yeah, that. Exactly. Right? Yeah, exactly. It just yeah. keeps going. <laughs> Under thirty thousand, I think, is the same <laughs> thing, seven through ten. Well, we're gonna take a little break here. We will be back with some emails, some phone calls, a little discussion of uh, some bonding I did with Barry Greenstein. Traveled yeah, here from uh, Niagara Falls all the way here to Foxwoods. Barry so Greenstein. Billy, Billy Greenstein. So we'll be back in a bit here how did, on. How did Freddie get in here? Poker Road Radio. <laughs> And we are back here at the Foxwood World Poker Finals. I am Bart Hansen here with oh, Joe Foxwood. Seabook. Gavin Seabook? Smith. My name is Seabook. <laughs> <laughs> Gavin Smith and Eugene Todd. Yo, 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 yo. Eugene yo, Todd, bro. bro. What's bro, up, boys? Bro, what's going on? Bart. What's up? My name always goes before Joe's. Oh, oh, here we try. go again. We have this thing. Same th same He's thing. like that. Gavin is much like a small child. So yeah, what is it? It's a redo? You have to repeat. No, we don't need no, to redo no, shit. we don't need to redo it. We don't redo uh, nothing. <laughs> but, uh, you know. Just so he knows. Eugene, you know, there's a little bit of a yeah. backstory here. We kind of had you on as a guest. And wait, wait, wait. May I? Absolutely, bro. Okay, okay. I'm not, okay. This is a complicated woven tale of what has happened in these last few days. I'm only going to begin it, right? So, of course, I run into Eugene Todd, bro. You know, upstairs, he's playing cash game. I say, you know, come on the show. The last show was hilarious. Of course, you know, some of it got, got cut off and the most hilarious shit we never even had. So, please come on the show. Eugene Todd, bro, says, I would love to come on the show. Let's do this. Okay. Then I receive a frantic phone call. Angry, upset, like he needed a hug. Late at night. Pissed off like a motherfucker, bro. <laughs> <off>. <laughs> Some shit went down. That's all I'm going to say. I'm going to let you tell the story. Yeah. You want me, you, bro, this, this, this story is the sickest thing you've ever heard. First of all, <laughs> my day started, you know, I, I came here a couple of days before. I played the 3K tournament in right. the, earlier in the day. I got off to, you know, we started with 10 grand in chips. I get off to like... A good start. I get to nineteen, twenty thousand. I get moved to a table with like four or five bananas at the table. You know, <laughs> I, f you know, finally we get we play a hand. I, f I, you know, I raise with two kings. I get one, one of, the, one of these banana, two of the bananas called. Yeah. The flop <laughs> came a uh, five seven jack. I ended up betting one of the bananas moves all in. It's a good I, flop for kings. Perfect flop for kings. Yeah. And I knew this banana at the best. He's got ace jack, but I gave the banana too much credit. You know, <laughs> homeboy turns over four six. Oh no. You know, and he hits the straight. So I go out in the tournament. Then afterwards, I go play a cash game. Right. You know, I actually sat down and played a cash game. I did good. Then I went to play a cash game with your pops. Right. So I was playing, you know, in the cash game. The cash game broke up at 12.30. That was right. Like, you saw, I saw you like at 12 o'clock. So I, right, you know, at 12.30, right. I decided, you know what? I'm out of here, bro. I had a, you know, decent day, except that I lost in the tournament. So I decided, you know, I'm going to go to my room. So I'm on the phone with my wifey, going up, getting ready to go upstairs, you know? And then I decided, let me just go out, you know, I just played poker for for fucking 14 hours, bro. Right, right, right. So I was like, yo, let me just get some fresh air, you know? So, you know, I go outside to get some fresh air. I had a little, like, I'm going to be honest, I had like a little a little joint. Right. It was fucking, I don't know, the size of Gavin's dick probably. Like, it was fucking, <laughs> wow. you know, maybe an, <laughs> an, inch and a, an inch and a half at the most. It was that little weed? Fucking inch and a half at the most, bro. You I had that little weed. I fucking, I go outside, you know. Uh -huh. I, I for the record, Eugene Todd, bro, has <laughs> never seen my penis. Yes, for definitely not, and I definitely never want to see it. Also, it's just an educated record. guess. Yeah, just, just an, an educated, educated guess. guess yeah. So I go out, you know, I go outside and, you know, whatever. I, I decide, let me go outside, and I go right outside over here, and I make a right. As I go outside... There is not one motherfucking person 
anywhere near Foxwoods. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> There's not a raccoon outside. I go outside, I make a fucking right, I walk down, and I take two tokes of this joint. You know what right. I'm saying? You, t- you take I two tokes off of Gavin's car. Yeah, that's it. There's only, yeah. two, ah. there's, there's, <laughs> a, there's only two tokes in the, so I throw the, I throw the fucker out, you know, yeah. whatever. I don't even think, I, th- I think I burned my finger because there's nothing really there. Right. So I f- I, as I'm, I'm heading back inside, all of a sudden, this one, this one uh, security guard comes running out, running out and going, hey! You know, I'm like, I didn't even understand that he's, I didn't even know he was talking to me because I'm thinking, what the hell's wrong with this right. guy? <laughs> all of a sudden, you know, he comes running over to me like, and going, hey, what the hell are you doing? What's going on? So, you know, I was telling him, what the hell's going on? What's wrong with, what? I go, what's going on with you, bro? What's wrong with you? Are you all right? <laughs> he's like, you know, <laughs> I was like, are you all right, my friend? What's wrong with you? Okay, nah. He's like, what are you doing? Are you doing drugs? See, I have a question now. <laughs> are you doing drugs? You doing drugs? See, see, I have a question now. When I smoked, when I smoked <laughs> weed in my, in my younger years, I would get, <laughs> I would get really paranoid. Like I wouldn't, if I was, if I had just smoked some weed and then some dude ran up at me like that, I would freak out. You go grab your right. Mexican. The, if you difference did. Between, <laughs> the difference between yeah. me and you is that I've been smoking weed like since I was 16 years old. Right. Like, I mean, we're talking about every, the same. So it doesn't get you. Day. It doesn't bother so you. I'm like, we're okay. talking you know, about I the same smoke, thing. It's weed. I mean, I who the hell come? Right. You know, it's a joint, bro. Yeah, it's like, you know, I, you know th- so whatever. So this guy, right, come, right, right. this guy fucking makes a whole big scene standing there ripping me. You know what I'm saying? And then all of a sudden, another guy comes out. This guy looked like, and these guys are wearing two fucking green jackets. I think I'm, I, I feel like I'm at, at playing golf. At, it's like a nature preserve. At the golf course. in uh, where, where Augusta. Like, the Augusta, Masters. Augusta, bro. The with Masters. the fucking <laughs> Masters of these guys with the green jackets, bro. <laughs> then this, the second guy comes out, this little fucking, this little Hindu. What <laughs> is, what is going on over here? <laughs> what, is, what is happening? What are you doing? <laughs> I go, yo, I go, what the hell is this, bro? <laughs> now I'm like... <laughs> I'm like now I'm like I can't believe this is happening. You know I'm like, oh, I'm like there's some nonsense over this. So now I'm seeing you got Hindus. You got listen to this guy, Phil Mickelson and Tiger Woods yeah, coming so out. Like BJ Singh. So these two guys, you know, I start speaking to this guy. Now all of a sudden I know I'm in big trouble because now there's two other security guards that are coming over and these guys aren't the regular, the real, like the regular security right. guys. Like these guys, these guys actually had walkie talkies. Like these guys only had flash. <laughs> these two guys only had flashlights. These guys actually put up, you know, they had some walkie talkies with them. Oh stuff, man, you know? you know when you jump up in like you know electronic gadgetry. I think that that's a big thing for cops. Like you'd go the next level up, it's like, oh shit, these, this is the next thing. So these next, you know, these next. Now I'm sitting. Now there's four guys already right. there. Now I'm thinking, what the fuck? What am I? What, are, <laughs> what the hell is this? What do I need this for? You know what I'm saying? Well, right. you know, I just, I just want to go. I just want to go to sleep. Right. <laughs> so I, you know, I'm sitting there, you know, with these four guys, and now, you know, all of a sudden I'm saying, fuck, fuck these guys. I'm out of here. You right. know, I just decide, you know what? I'm gonna walk away, and right, that's right, it. Right, so right. I start walking away. All of a sudden, these guys surround me, <laughs> like in a circle. <laughs> And I'm thinking, oh no! Now I'm scratching my head. And I, you know, bro, I remember being surrounded a couple of times. Right. You know, one time it wasn't a pleasant feeling when you get surrounded by a whole bunch of no. a whole bunch of dudes ready to fuck you up. You know, no, you do not want to get surrounded. So th- that was one time I got really fucked up. One time with, with five guys, and the the and the only other time I got surrounded is when we were when we we're break dancing or something, ready to do like a foot <laughs> shuffle or something. You know? I got surrounded once. I was on a hike by skunks. It wasn't quite the same situation, but I was really afraid. I think that'd too. be worse. You said it you was got, really afraid. You, you told me, or you said you got beat up one time, right? You got surrounded by big, by, by yeah. five biker types upstate. Upstate, got, got yep. mauled, wow. right? I got fucked up, bro. <laughs> These guys fucking <laughs> laid me out. Kid. <laughs> they but all I, beat I, your I, ass? Pr- I protected myself good, so they didn't really hurt me that badly, you know? But these guys, who they 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 did some work on me, boy. <laughs> so these guys surround you. This is the security. I mean, Foxwoods, you know, security yeah. or whatever security right, guards. Right. And then what happened? Well, they started abusing me, like rip, you know, like talking to me like I'm some kind of scumbag or something. Oh, low, verbally, some, really? verbally, verbally, yeah. Okay. They're like talking to me like I'm wow. some low life. One of the one of the guys, one of the big the big the head the big security guy came down and he was trying to he was just all he wanted me to do is admit that I smoked weed. <laughs> like that's all like it was just his like I don't know if that's he just somehow wanted to convince me that I smoked right. and I to the death I didn't fuck, I told him I'd smoke nothing. Cuz so, uh, the second you say you did, then he's going to be like exactly. Now you're out of here. <laughs> yeah, so I told you know, on me I told him I, I don't know what the hell you're talking about. I have nothing on me. You guys are nuts. What the hell do you guys want from me? Let me just, you know, leave me alone. Right. And you know what the f- you know, me I'm a nice guy. I was like, yo, I play poker. I try to be like, you know, I I was a stockbroker for a long time. So, you know, I I know how to talk to people, you know what I'm saying? I'm not going to be, you know, I wasn't going to be a dick. I was right, just right, trying right. to be a nice guy and tell him, "Yo, bro, just leave me the fuck alone, guy." What the hell? I didn't do anything. <laughs> I know how to talk to people. Yo, bro, just leave me the fuck alone. Oh, 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 oh. I, go, I don't know where I come from. They don't do that on fucking Wall Street all that much, <laughs> bro. 
I mean, we're you know, this is right. we're in Foxwoods. There's nature out there, bro. This, this is, is we're they, in the not fucking not woods. There's not nothing only that, going on. This, this is like American Indian Reservation. Yeah, yeah. yeah there's no we're, law. You're not we're, even any laws. Well, believe me, I I have studied American Indian <laughs> history a lot. Okay? They smoke a lot of fucking weed. They smoke weed. a lot of weed. They harvest it. You know, so it's even more ridiculous. You know, my question is, did they, did they, you know, decide to put you into counseling? What kind of situation no, so did you have to? After the four guys surrounded me, all of a sudden, you know, ooh, 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 <laughs> fucking <laughs> cops come, come. Now the cops come. Oh, man. Now I'm thinking. So the fuck. real cops came. Now the real. Now oh, the see, real. now that's, that's the that's worst it. shit. Oh, no, there weren't Indian one. reservation cops? No, they were, oh. fuck, they were the real oh, cops. Okay. They came down. They pulled me over to the side. Like, yo, buddy. They're like, yo, buddy, what the, what right. the hell's going on over here? You know, what's happening? I was like, yo, I don't know what's happening. Oh, these guys are fucking nuts. You know, this guy just came out. Bro, he looked, he, when he came out at me, bro, it looked like, bro, I killed six people and there's blood all over me. Like, I'm holding a fucking, <laughs> I, I was holding a knife. You know what I'm saying? And I was like, you know, so I was like, yo, what's up with you, bro? I, I didn't do anything. So the cops, I all said, yo, I didn't do anything. You know, the cops actually were laughing. They're like, what the, it's like a joke. Right, right, right. So the worst, then all of a sudden, this one dude comes into my face, you know? Like this one, one of the guys, and they starts reading me the, this is the Manchukit Pequot fucking <laughs> rules of the of the Manchukit Pequot gaming officials Ma of this Tuckett. Mash and Tuckett. Uh, uh, you are banned for this, banned for life. I'm like, yo, buddy, get. First of all, he went right into my face, and his breath was kicking, bro. I was like, yo, kid. I go, yo, my friend, you have a serious case, exactly, bro. Get out of my face. <laughs> he goes, what the hell, exactly? I go, your breath smells exactly like Gavin's ass. <laughs> <laughs> how, come, how come this story had to involve talking my ass? Because <laughs> <my ass? laughs> that's how we roll on Poker Road Radio. Hell yeah, bro. So, so you went through all this shit. They said, yo, you're out of so here. So the they booted me. They said, you can't come right. back right away, right there on the spot. The dude goes, comes right. up to me, reads me, goes, you can't come back inside. I go, that's not, that's fucked up, my how friend. How do you get your stuff out of your room? Well, exactly. first off, I go out. <laughs> You have a bet. Uh, there's definitely not. First of all, I, have, I just played the 5100 game and I had like right. 20 grand in chips that I didn't even cash out. I just right. went to the room and I just bought into the 5K tournament, which I was going to play in the morning. So I told him, "There's you. Uh, you have a better shot of pigs fucking flying than me. Think I'm leaving here right now because <laughs> I want to get my. Give me my get money. I, money. I got back, no problem. Right? Right. Like, yeah, you want to yeah. throw me out? Just give me my fucking dough. You think yeah. I'm just going to be a fucking idiot and say, hey, I just spent 15,000. I'm going to fucking leave because of you. <laughs> so I start, you know, and the cops go, whatever. So somehow they, these guys talk. They said, stay for the night. You know what I'm saying? And no problem you can you know so they right. let me stay for the night nine o'clock in the morning i had security waiting by my door right. they fucking walked me to the cage i got all my money and what i went home you know so i go wow. home which is fucking pissing me off i just felt like a well, what kind of idiot do you feel like you come to play a poker tournament this is what you do for a living and they bust you for smoking pot so i felt like you know kind of like an idiot you know what i'm saying and the worst the worst thing is when i walked into the door i came you know my i'm just hanging out at home and what pissed me off is that my kids knew that I was going to play a poker tournament, you yep. know? So, like, my kids, you know, they root for me. They're like, ask me, how you doing? How's this? You know what I'm saying? So, I'm like, I c they come home from school and they're like, what the hell are you doing here? <laughs> they're like, what the hell are you doing, dad? You, you're out already? You know? Like, yeah, you know, yeah, you know what's and awesome? And you're like, yo, yo son, I, bro, daddy so smoked a doobie. I know. The awesome I, thing is I believe that your children talk exactly like that. That is that is the most awesome thing. <laughs> my kids were like, yo, what happened, dad? You're out already? I was like, man, nah, buddy, I'm not out. I got kicked out of Foxwoods, you know? <laughs> <laughs> He's like, what? What do you mean you got you? What, what, what the hell happened? What did you do? You know? <laughs> so I blamed it all on this dumb fucking security guard. Now right. I fucking have to, I, I have to answer to my fucking kids. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> they fucking put my name in the mud. They slung me in the dirt. Kicked me the fuck out of here. Now I got to explain it to my fucking kids. What the fuck happened? And all I want to do is play poker and pay them <laughs> the fucking fee to play, bro. What the fuck? <laughs> So I got pissed, you know? Yep. So I'm laying home. And actually, I didn't really give a fuck. It's only a tournament, you know what I'm saying? But these are like right. this particular tournament I look forward to. This is my hometown, you know? I live sure. three hours away. So for me, you know, it's like, what the fuck? I want to pl play this event. So right. I went home. I was pissed. You know what I'm saying? And I'm thinking, you know, whatever. What do I do? So I just figured, fuck it. I won't play. I already made a reservation. I'm going to go to the play the Borgata tournament because they have right. like a cool five grand tournament with 50K in chips. Like a really good, good structure, you know? So right, I was right, figuring, right. fuck it. I'll go over there and play. And then I went, my, I called up my friend who's an attorney, who's like, you know, a good, real good friend of mine. So I, he went, he stopped by my house. He lives right next, like right next door to me. Right, right, right. So I stopped by his house in the morning and, uh, you know, just for fun, I told him what happened. And he, you know, tells me, he goes, I'll bet you five grand that I'll get you back if you want, how bad you want to play, you know? <laughs> I go, I, you know, I want to play. He goes, I'll bet you five grand I'll get you in, you know? So I was like, I knew that I called everyone. I called Mike Ward. Right. I called every single person that I knew to right, somehow right, right. do something. Do something for me, bro. Anybody, <laughs> bro. Time. Can someone step up to the plate and help, I would have stepped up help, up, com <laughs> help a compadre you help out? You didn't call Can me. someone do something for you me? Didn't call Everyone me. says, fuck you, bro. Get out. <laughs> Nothing didn't. for you. Mike Ward, fuck you. You know what? And last time I, I was here, I won a, t a tournament. 
I didn't tell Mike Ward, fuck you, Mike Ward. I said, I blessed Mike Ward. A couple <laughs> hundreds for Mike Ward, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> now, <laughs> nothing for Mike Ward. Nothing for Mike Ward, you know what I'm saying? Why didn't you call G. Smith? So, uh, but, whatever. Know, I, I, I didn't care. I didn't want to, you know, I called. I, I told did, Bill you know, Adler. Bill called Mike for you. I don't know if it, I called if Mike myself. More, I told him. I go, yo, Mike, can you do something for me? He goes, ah, I don't think I can do it. You know, he didn't seem like he was going to try it. It didn't sound like there was any excitement in his voice. Right. Like, you know, you can see excitement in my voice. In his voice, he's like, okay, uh, yeah, I'll see what I can do. But I don't think I can do anything. All right, but I'll call you back. All right. <laughs> <laughs> like, he just, you know, fuck it. You know, 587 or 586 right. ain't going to make that big of a difference. Yeah? So, okay, so, so so I'm assuming that you, you made the $5,000 bet with your boy. So I made the five. I figured, you know, fuck it. It's a good bet because worst case scenario, I'm going to make five sure. grand. You know, sure. and, and if not, it's going to cost me 15, 15 grand to play the tournament. Right. right? So he called up and... Uh, you know, I was there in his office, and, you know, he called up, and he did a really, you know, did a really good job. He told just, you know, he didn't have to do anything. They told him the truth. He goes, oh, they go, there's, it's a police matter. So, right. we f there's no police matter. The cops never came. They, we, went, we spoke to security. As soon as we got on the phones with one of the security guards, as soon as my lawyer started asking, what's your name? Oh, how do you spell it? Your first and last <laughs> name? They were like, oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on a second. They transferred you to someone else. You know, now this guy, you didn't want to get in trouble. Now, all of a sudden, the other security, what's your name? And they're like, oh, Muhammad, oh, and they didn't want to get, you know, what's your last name? Oh, <laughs> right. oh, eh. they put you on hold for like, you know, and then all of a sudden now, you know, my lawyer's like, all right, don't worry, we're getting there, you know? <laughs> so all of a sudden, you know, they fucking go, okay, listen, we're going to, you know, they transferred us, at, well, now we're out of security. We right, beat right, the security right. part, now they, they transferred us to a place called, uh, uh, what the fuck is it called, bro? Hell. Risk Management. <laughs> <laughs> they, had a, they have risk <laughs> management over here. So my lawyer got on the phone with them and said, yo, buddies, you guys don't know what the hell you're in for. You know, this is what my client does for a living. You went and put his name in the mud and the dirt. He's a multimillionaire. He doesn't give a fuck. He's going to, we're ready to fucking sue you guys to the fucking end. And all of a sudden, the lady, you know, she fucking, you know, she thought, thought about it. Risk. For, she thought about, she weighed risk their risk. management. They exactly. weighed their risk. Maybe we'll they, manage this best by letting them back in. Their, <laughs> you know, they weighed their risk management and they decided right. that it was fucking better, you know, it was better for them to fucking let me back in, bro. Yeah, man, because oh, your man, boy told incredible. them it was about to be Todd so, Woods instead you know? of Foxwoods. And you know man. what, bro? They fucking. Todd it Woods. was It was. <laughs> bro it Woods. Was, it was bro for Woods. no fucking reason, bro. That's the right. worst part. Like, I'm, you know, me, if I get busted, whatever, I got I got caught smoking cool. You know what I'm saying? I'll understand, you know? Right, right, Like, I smoked plenty of times in hotels in my room. And I stunk the whole place up, and you know what I'm saying. And sometimes <laughs> you know you get you know you know, but a normal a normal guy would come to the door and say, you know like for me it happened before they come and say yo buddy what's put it out, what's yeah. going on you know yeah. you, give the, guy, you yeah. give the guy fifty bucks you know what I'm saying He's, you know <laughs> it's like Mexico it's cool you know what I'm saying everything's cool you know? right. yeah it's like but here it's this, like, what's these, going guys on? Wanted, <laughs> these guys these guys wanted to sling me in the mud they called right. the cops on me they fucking they disrespected, like, they disrespected, disrespected me bro yeah. blatantly disrespected me bro <laughs> and my lord you know me I was like you know what I. I could have won after these. I, if it was me, like ten years back right now, and I was twenty-seven, not twenty-six, and I have kids, man, I'd be looking to get these motherfuckers fired, you know, for doing this type of shit. But me, I'm not, I'm not like that, bro. You know, I know these guys need a job, so I'm not gonna, you know. I just wanted to be able to right. come down here and play, and that's so, it. You so know? you're playing tomorrow. Hell Long yeah, story I'm playing short, you're I, have playing no, I have no choice but to play tomorrow. Yeah. Now, since the last time you were on the show, you finished fifth at the Borgata. Is how is the uh, the tournament circuit still treating you? Still the grind, huh? Yeah, to Good. tournament poker for me, uh, it's kind of it's tough, you know. You gotta. You can for, for me. I, I don't know. I've been this whole year. I've been playing really good, and I've noticed that I can go play the perfect tournament and play like four days perfect. Do nothing wrong. Make the right laydowns. You know, I, I when I know I'm beat, I lay the hands down. When I know I'm ahead, I'm getting my money and going doing everything right. And at the end of the day, you get fucking cocked for it. So <laughs> it's those bananas. Sometimes so, you know. fucking you know, <laughs> this is the worst fuck. Oh, so this is the letter that these fucking idiots. <laughs> oh wait, wait. Let me see this. Let me, me see this. Let me see this. <laughs> no, no. You can. You can. You can. Get, okay. Dear Mr. Todd, after further investigation, the decision has been made to reinstate you as a patron. No, you are now you are now a patron. You're no longer yes. a customer of Foxwoods Effective November 7th. When you decide to visit our casino again, please carry this letter of reinstatement with you for the first couple of visits. Uh, yada, yada, yada. Be advised that this letter is the only valid way you can get in. Yada, yada, yada. We will give you um, oral sex editing time <laughs> now, now that you've bent All us right. over your knee. <laughs> you know, one of the funniest things that when you were on, uh, on Poker Wire Radio the last time you were on is you told this story, the racetrack story, and it got cut off at the end. And uh, I want you to tell it again because it was the funniest thing and nobody heard it. So we want to tell you, tell us about your. This uh, is actually the tell you about your the, race track story. the one I, I I got arrested one time. I, I actually twice. This is the one time I got arrested. I was like fifteen. Hey, was hey, bro! Years old. Before you start, be careful. 
saying how many times you've been arrested yeah, because yeah, in yeah. some places it's might, very specific. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Don't like in Canada, those borders, I, I, you know, I'm fine. I never did anything wrong. So <laughs> when I was 15, you've always been allowed into Canada, right? No, yeah. n- never. So when I was 15 yeah. years old, we, you know, we used to go upstate to like upstate New York, just chill for the summer. It's like a cool place, just you know, by the lake. We used to ride boats, jet ski, just smack, you know, hang out, a whole bunch of friends. So was, I was 15, and we all went to the racetrack, like. I don't know. I was 50 like at night, you know, and we were just all hanging out like a whole group of us, like 30 of us. And we were fucking at the racetrack and all of a sudden like bets are going around. Who's going to, you know, like just stupid stuff. Like who's going to, who di- who's going to run around the ra- You know, will someone do this? Will someone do that? And I was like, they like put up like 200 bucks or something. They said, yo, 200 right. if anyone fuck you like between 200 bucks if anyone runs the racetrack, you know? <laughs> so me, I'm thinking this is a long time ago. I'm 200 at that time, 200 bucks for me was a lot of dough, bro. I was 15. This is 22 years ago. $200 was fucking $200, kid. You know what I'm saying? I thought that big deal. What's the big deal to run a racetrack? It's a half a mile. I can right. do it quickly. Sure. So I decided, <laughs> I decide, you know what? I'm fucking going for it, boy. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So the horses are galloping over there. And like during the, like, this is like towards like the middle of the end of the day. And all of the horses are galloping. And I just decide, you know what? I'm off, kid. So I fucking, <laughs> like a clown, bro. The clown that I am, like the biggest moron. Who the fuck? What kind of idiot runs a fucking racetrack with horses? Me, sir. Right? Amongst idiots, <laughs> I mean, well, I'm king how, of the idiots. How big of an idiot do you have to be to go out like into a fucking track where there's fucking horses running and run the fucking around a racetrack, bro? I don't but understand why Gavin's taking off his clothes. Why right is now. Gavin taking his shirt off? <laughs> oh, he's gonna scary. show the the beautiful tattoo that he has of uh, oh. the compliments of me. You want to talk about idiots, buddy? <laughs> oh, I got another man's initials tattooed on my fucking <laughs> yeah, back. Bro. My that's, fucking that's back. Fucking bad, you ran bro. around a fucking track. <laughs> yeah. You have to. You do have to understand yeah. when you that's come on Poker Road tits, Radio, bro. you are amongst a lot of idiots. <laughs> yeah. So if you're gonna make this this claim, <laughs> so you yeah. run around the track. Yeah. So I'm fucking running around the track. And me, I'm like, an, I'm, you know, I'm an idiot, bro. I'm running around the fucking track. There's, and there's, fuck, like, you know, there, there were horses actually on the track running also. And this is like, this is not a... Where are you winning? These are the ones with the fucking carriages, you know. The, <laughs> oh, the, like, the harness, the yeah, harness, harness racing, racing. Harness racing, And yeah. the funniest thing, like, I'm fucking running and I'm... But yeah, I was out of shape. I'm not in shape now, but even then I was like out of shape. And fucking, I was like, Gavin, you think Gavin can run a half a fucking mile around the racetrack without stopping? You know what I'm saying? I doubt it. I'll race you know? against you. Uh, you probably Oh, that would saying? actually be a good uh, race. Uh, <laughs> You probably beat me, bro, so I don't know. I, I can't run. I'm fucking slow as shit. So I was fucking running around the track, and I'm fucking running, and fucking it was the funniest thing. I'm just <laughs> thinking about it now. I'm running, and I'm running, and I'm looking at the horses, looking like the jockey's <laughs> looking at me, bro, and I'm fucking looking at him, and I'm running, and he's like, he's looking at him. I'm like, what the fuck are you looking at, you idiot, you know? Yeah, I'm like, I'm <laughs> <laughs> the jockey's like, I'm the idiot. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the jockey's like, I'm the idiot, bro. I'm like, what the fuck, you know, what the fuck you want? So as I'm fucking running around the track, Right. I just ran a half a mile and I'm out of shape, bro. <laughs> and as I'm running back through the half a mile and I'm getting out, there's already security there waiting for me to come out. You know, I'm like, oh, fuck. So I get out, you know what I'm saying? And all my friends are now in the background, you know? So I'm fucking, I get out, you know, and I'm walking. You know, the guy walks me fucking. He's ready to walk me to like, you know, my friends are behind. Let him go. Let him go. What the fuck? What the fuck? Let him go. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, like I'm and I'm walking over there to the fucking to the door, and all of a sudden I'm already out of breath, and I'm fucking an idiot. And what I did was now the bit turned into a bigger idiot. The guy like we, is ready. He takes me into the security office, and for some reason he opens the door and he goes in himself. <laughs> and, and I'm fucking and closing, like, and I'm like, see ya. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm fucking, I'm fucking slow. I can't run for shit, bro. You know what I'm saying? As it is, bro, I'm a fucking slow poke. And all of a sudden, now after I ran a half a mile, and I'm out of breath. What the fuck <laughs> in the world made me start running the fuck again? I have no fucking clue, bro. Did you get away? Heck no, bro. <laughs> fucking get away, bro. I started running another half a mile, and all of a sudden, this guy was old, bro. <laughs> this old guy. And this old guy was running after me. The I'm guy was probably fuck. like 85 years he's like, old. No, he's, he was like 50, bro. Like 50, 45 or something. I'm fucking 17, bro. And I'm, he's running after me, bro. And I'm looking back, bro. He's right behind me, dude. He's, <laughs> and now I'm looking, bro, and I'm so tired, bro. And I can't fucking breathe already. And I already hear, uh, yeah, he's in there. They're, they're, they're walkie-talkies. He's, he's wearing like, out. He's, he's wearing out. <laughs> he's finished. You know? I'm, break, I'm beating him down. <laughs> he's fucking so whatever. I just, oh, I just already. I, I think I just stopped, and that was the worst thing. Because if I just went into I'm the him, office, you know? I'm beating him down. You know, I ran high school <laughs> so track. Cop, <laughs> so the cops come. They fucking arrest me. You know what I'm saying? And now I end up going to. I go to Monticello prison for fucking a little while. My friends came and bailed me out. And that's pretty much the fucking great story, oh, bro. That's <laughs> such a good story. Yeah. You get the 200 bucks, the sick, though. The sick part about it, I don't even know how to... 
there's not too many people that know about something like that. You know what I'm saying? Someone had have been there at this time that listens to your show. So, you know. Well, we're big. You guys are big, bro. You're getting there. You know what I'm saying? Shit's we're going. Big. Shit's happening, boys. Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're a little wiser in your older years. Well, actually, the shenanigans. actually, you know how big we are? Honestly, seriously. There's a new poker tour out there since the last Eugene Todd thing. And they, they call it the Isle 6 tour. <laughs> it, they're, they're, at, they're, they're at shopping marts all over the country. Yo, Gav, it's one of the biggest fucking tours in the listen, history. Bro, of I got to get you back a little bit. I don't know what the hell's going on, but I've been always watching. Like every time, like you're, I'm like a big fan of yours. And every time I look and see your pictures and stuff, I always fucking see you wearing a hat, bro. Like every fucking time, no matter what, you're you're like wearing a hat, bro. What's going on? What's going on? I just want to know. What's is there something going on with the hat kid? I can categorically tell you there ain't much going on. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, no. Okay, I understand uh, everything. Uh, put the fucking, put the hat back on. Uh, no, I, don't, <laughs> I don't mind. Fucking, you I, know, don't, put the, uh, I understand now. I don't bro. mind not I wearing got, a hat. Bro, I understand, it's kid. It's all, it's, all, it's all good, kid. Now I understand, bro. Th- this is coming from a guy that wears a hat all the time. <laughs> it's true. I don't think it made me have seen you I mean, one I've time I've never seen you without a fucking really, hat. Really, bro? What do you mean? I don't wear a hat all the time, kid. He's got hair, I got hair, bro. He's got hair. But I've never seen you without a hat. You got the fucking power rallies going on. What are you talking about? My shit's going bad, too, kid. Eugene Todd, bro. I'm surprised I didn't lose it all already. <laughs> bro, I want to I want to thank you for coming on the show. You can come back anytime, anytime. Any day. Good luck for you tomorrow, man. I think I'm, we need an, I think we need another host. coming back in. I think we need another host. We need to make this we need to make Eugene Todd part Eugene of the regular Todd, poker road. Uh, we can rotate oh you God. out. The yeah, Eugene out. Todd <laughs> section. <laughs> anytime, <laughs> boys. Back whatever back you want, kid. I'm there for you. All right, baby. There Thanks a lot, Great kid. performance once again. Later, guys. We, we'll be back here. We're going to wrap things up on Poker Road Radio from Foxwoods. Want to learn how to play poker like multiple prelim event winner Joe Seabock? Or perhaps you want to learn how to bubble the TV final table over and over and over again. The Bear taught Seabock and let him teach you. PokerRoad.com is the only site where you can get exclusive audio tips from poker champion Barry Greenstein. Click on Tips from the Bear to download the podcast today. And we are back here at Foxwoods. Guys, I mean, Eugene Todd, bro, I mean, what can I say? I mean, the show went he a little is, bit over. He today. is a very, and I'm a very emotional person. <laughs> Eugene Tabro redefines what it is to be an emotional. I love human Eugene being. Tabro, but even I mean, though he cuts me up all the time. How can, yeah. how can, I mean, in this day and age, how can anybody get shit from smoking like a roach? I, I think mean, you know, <laughs> honestly, that that opens up a whole well, other. I book. think it's because it's not. Within the law, so I think anybody can get fucking. But it is shit a stupid law. It. But it is a stupid, ridiculous. I mean, I could go on for hours about you know the whole you know government position on marijuana. Well, we live in I don't even smoke weed. And let me say, I do not smoke weed anymore. I used to when I was younger, all the time. I don't even smoke weed anymore. But it's just a joke. It honestly is a joke, and it's a, it's a very stupid thing to see somebody you know like Eugene getting targeted for something stupid. Of course, Gavin's right. It is illegal, and ultimately, you know, you have to pay attention to that. But I think it's a bad law, and I hope that it gets dealt with at some point. I'm gonna do a couple of uh, emails here before we wrap things up, and this one came from Doug, and this was actually on November second at the end of Niagara, and I thought it was interesting. Doug, Doug I love from Doug. Los Angeles love says, <laughs> "I just got through watching Kimberly Lansing's November first interview of Barry on Card Player." After uh, the WPT falls, you played down to the final TV table. At the very end of the interview, in the last second and a half, it looked as if Barry tried to lean in for the hug or kiss on the cheek and felt the proverbial hand from Kimberly, so decided to back off. Barry's move was extremely subtle, and I was just wondering if that was what he was going for. I got to say, I was really, you know, I traveled from Niagara to Foxwoods with Barry, and, you know, y- him and I, you know, we started. You know, having a nice conversation and stuff, but he was kind of a quiet guy. You know, he would in well, the airport. He would kind of mofo. He would p- he pace back and forth, but every interaction that he ever had with any type of attractive woman, he was just Mr. Smooth, man. You know, what? it was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> this topic is both interesting and repugnant to me at the same time. <laughs> and oh, Barry's been wheeling chicks for as long as he can. Know. Honestly, this I say, is I say, I say, I say, Barry scored more ass than Siebes has for sure. Okay, that 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 I can I can categorically tell you is, is not true, but but I will tell you this: Kimberly is beautiful. There's no question. Uh, we all know this. She is not Asian. 
So I doubt very seriously that Barry was going is it for just a little it, love. Is it the strict Asian thing with him? Pretty Dude, much. I mean, he, he has, always says that. He has yellow fever. It is like unbelievable. This guy. Yeah. I mean, that's just the way he rolls. You know, <laughs> everybody rolls a little differently, and no, but he has know. yellow. He has yellow relationship fever. I'm sure he doesn't mind a little strange now and again. Well, uh, he's been. I mean, he has you know turned his compass towards uh, the east, if you will, and he has been setting sail that way for a long time. <laughs> so even though it may have been. You know what it was <laughs> at, at different points. I'm telling you, this is this is nice. So I this was just an innocent thing with him. I, say I think yeah. it was an innocent. I, I, think, I think I think I thing. think we need to have at some point on PokerRoad.com. Yep. Uh, a Sieb's Greenstein chick off. Oh, I would. Where be we him. send him into a bar and we just see who can wheel more. Did you ever see oh. that show on VH1? Oh, it is on. Are you kidding me? Did it's you on like Donkey Kong. It's on like Donkey. This is sick. This is the the one thing maybe I could beat him in my father at. Did, did you see the, the show? On, on <laughs> I got VH1 money on. I got bars? money on Greenstein. Uh -huh, they put hidden like, cameras in the bar. Dude, and you I just would go definitely. In and you just try to pick we could have it on prop bets. We could have it on Raw Vegas prop bets. It'd be me and Bear. Ooh, I, I got my money on Greenstein. Dude, I will back. I will back your action on the backside, and I will make a side bet with you about that. On top of the bet that I'll have with him. That's a whole lot of betting. Dude, it's I've never even heard, I don't even know exactly what back your action on the backside is, but I know it sounds pretty fucking scary. It's going to be good stuff. It's well, we got another stuff. email here from Lou, and this was an interesting idea. He says, hey, guys, I have an interesting idea for the show. <laughs> an Alan Kessler bust-out report at each tournament. Have Chainsaw. Kessler Whoa. on the day. Oh, from now on, we do not refer to him as Alan Kessler. His name is Chainsaw. He has the chainsaw. All right, chainsaw bust out report. At each tournament, have chainsaw on that day that he busts out. Right. Tell the story of his bust out hand with you guys providing commentary and taking shots of him on along the way. Watch I, the. Uh, I love it. I love Fox it. Fox Honestly. season five. He gets it all in with ace ten versus ace eight, and he's so upset. He looks absolutely crushed, like he knows he's going to lose. He's ready to walk out the door. The flop comes 6-7-3. Alan just keeps shaking his head. He's ahead with ace-10. The turn's a five. Alan looks like someone just told him that a member had died, and the river's a four, right. and he loses to a straight. We, we could do that segment. I mean, it would just be like an everyday situation in Gavin and mine's life since we hear that every <laughs> we time. Could, we could, we could actually, every time Alan is available and in the area, we'll just get him to give yeah. us a previous bust-out story. It'll be great. We'll he's got thousands. I, I love it. He's got many. He's not going to... And then he'll even throw in a one where he almost hit the Royal Flush. Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Star, you know? <laughs> It'll be good. we got plenty of material on that one. This guy. I'm I mean down with it. <laughs> Chainsaw. Let's make Chainsaw part of the show. Right. Well, I'm really excited to and finally have and you folks, here, Joe. Uh, yeah. I'm, it's very well, great. Uh, to I want it. our listeners to help us out on this one too. All right, what's up? Because I mean, I made up. I, I, I'm responsible for making up Chainsaw. Yep. And I like the nickname, and I think it's fitting, and I think it's perfect. But we need more people to do it. So let's start emailing like card player, and bluff, tell him to give him poker chainsaw pages, in the quotes. everyone, and let's get him to quotation Chainsaw in between Alan Kessler. I like let's it. make I like it. let's make Alan Kessler. Really become chainsaw. Let's make it so like he's gonna be like Madonna, and he'll eventually be a one name person. Be chainsaw. I like, be chainsaw. I like the idea. I'm in. Of course, if you want to email us, you can email us at prradio at pokerroad.com. Prradio at pokerroad.com. And if you want to leave a voicemail, you can call eight seven seven eight three six seven six two three. That's eight seven seven eight three six road. And that's gonna wrap things up for today, Joe. Finally. We finally get the three of us in well, here Well, I'm really glad I got in the building, but obviously <laughs> I'm a little sick about the tournament. But you have uh, played tomorrow, right? Yeah, I, I'm going to play again tomorrow. <laughs> I'm going to find a way. But no, I'm, I'm very, Play as very Joe excited. Seabock Greenstein tomorrow. Jo exactly. I'll be Joe Seabock Greenstein, a totally different person. And you are a little bummed out, I mean, I can tell. It sure. sucks, it yeah. sucks. But it is very good to start off, you know, po the real start off poker road. You guys had some dead ass weight in here. Oh you know, yeah. yeah. Falls. Hey, nobody's happier than old G Smith. I'll tell you that. <laughs> <much>. <laughs> now it's gonna be the real show, and we're gonna kick it off, and we've kicked it off with a bang, so it's all good. Well, Gavin, good luck to you. Tomorrow. Thank you. And we're signing off. Good night, everybody. Come back tomorrow at Foxwoods here on Poker Road Radio. See you.